Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the concept of spamming and spams, the motive, origin and functioning of spams, and the preventive measures available to counter spamming. First, the introduction. There are a wide variety of definitions and interpretations of the word itself. But at its core, spam is unsolicited, irrelevant email sent in bulk to a list of people. For illustration, let's say a business developer purchased a list of email addresses from a local business organization. On the surface, that list of addresses seems like it could contain some great prospects for the business. And the user wants to send them an email with a relevant offer they cannot refuse. But since those people do not give explicit permission to contact them, sending an email to that list would be considered spam. Spam is considered to be any unwanted commercial electronic message. Spamming is the process of crowding the user's mail inbox with unsolicited or junk mail. It is generally used to advertise about any product or services, but the real problem arises for the user when the mails contain viruses and malicious softwares that can damage the user's computer or the data. It is often a source of scams, computer viruses and offensive content that takes up valuable time and increases costs for consumers, business and governments. Software companies offer their products for free, but they need to make money in one way or another. So they use several methods to earn. One of those methods is selling ads. Many websites have banner ads or pop-up windows with advertisements in them that are visible when the software is used. Advertising companies pay the software manufacturer to place the ads in their product, allowing the software manufacturer to offer their product for free to the customer. Next is spam functioning. There is a long list of conditions to determine a mail as a spam in comparison to a normal mail. There are certain features which are seen to identify a spam and to further reckoning its severity. The identification is also necessary to determine whether the operation will pass through the spam filters incorporated in the system security countermeasures. By and large, the appearance of the mail will show some characteristic phrases like free or buy now or click here, etc. Generally, the system measures calculate the spam score to label a mail as a scam. Mail as a spam. If the system security measures spam score exceeding the threshold, the email automatically transported into the junk folder of the mailbox. However, the determination of such spam score is not consistent for every mail server and the administrator may pass some mails through as a normal mail. Obviously, the filters are unable to function as they are entrusted to do. It is important to know that the spam mails are not always passed through. Just because of the inability of the administrator or due to the ineffectiveness of the security measures, but several times it has been observed that spam uses deceptive cloak to pass the filters untouched. Almost all the mail servers are equipped with the option available for the user to help the administrator to identify the spam and hence they provide the indications like mark as spam or this is junk. Spam filters or one mail server 
is though sync up with the other mail servers and to each other to share the identification of spam in every possible route. For the reason of safety, mechanism of spam filters is not published or else it would give an opportunity to the spammers to bypass the filters and fulfill their intentions and harm the users. Now the question arises that despite of such security measures, how a spam is able to infringe the filter? The answer is the mistakes of the users while handling their mailboxes. No doubt, many internet service providers are directly or indirectly enabling the spammers to create and peddle the spam products into the web world. As a general rule, marketing to spammer is far more profitable than being a spammer. Next is obtaining emails for spamming. There are several ways spammers acquire email addresses. Spammers buy the email addresses from someone else or purchase software that gathers email addresses off the internet or even hack into the online providers and send users bogus deals to fraudulently acquire users' passwords and email addresses. If someone belongs to a news group or ever enter a chat room or signed up for a newsletter or posted on a bulletin board or placed an advertisement on any classified ad page or sent an e-card or entered any sweepstakes or signed up for anything that required to provide the user's email address, the address can be harvested. The only exceptions are secured server signups and an opt-in list that secures its address list in databases that cannot be assessed by robot software. First is online survey. There are several websites available which ask the user to fill out their survey forms so they can improve their service better. Most of those forms contain small check-in option box which generally says about the reception of information or newsletters from the respective website. Once that box is checked, the mailbox becomes prone to be flooded with the spam messages. It is, however, not necessary that not checking opt-in box will not draw the spam mail. They may get in the mailbox remotely. Second is email address displayed on website. This is the way of getting email addresses effortlessly. In the humongous world of m-commerce and neck-to-neck -neck competition, almost all of the business firms or individuals are having email addresses readily available on their marketing websites in order to connect with their consumers directly. The consumers also in goodwill share their email addresses with the business partners, respective reasons. The list of such unprotected email addresses are easily swept for the purpose of spamming. Next is spyware. Another way to obtain email addresses for the system list is introducing a malified spyware to the system. Spywares are small script so designed that it can track the movement of the system on the internet and it is done without the knowledge of the user of the concerned system. Spywares are generally unsolicited programs which are unknowingly downloaded by the user either directly or as an accessory to a downloadable operation. Spywares were originally created to assist marketers to track the advertising campaigns and prepare statistics of operational and non-operational data. The problem related to spyware is that it has an ability to collect 
and transfer personal data present on the infected system, not to mention those data contains important information including email addresses. These spywares leak the email addresses to the unsculptured members of the cyber community. Spywares can also get into the computer system through cookies even after removing the cookies. The spyware can remain and continue to track the movements on the internet. If any freeware has been downloaded in a computer, there is an increased chance of spyware intrusion which may be sending information without the knowledge and permission of the user. Next is preventive measures. It is always recommended to read the fine print before filling out any survey form or information form and to avoid providing any personal email address which could be misused. Although virus updates and up-to-date security programs are available, it is wise to open any suspicious mail with caution and not directly open the attachments of mail identified as unknown. Emails containing executable files are mostly dangerous and must be avoided. Any email containing softwares attached as an attachment could put the system security and performance at risk. Malicious softwares can corrupt the computer system and even hijack email account to use it as a host of virus dissemination. Frequently, spammers send mails with an appearance similar to the people known to the user. This is known as spoofing. In case of even a slight degree of doubt about the email, it is recommended to scan the mail by using security programs like anti-spams, antivirus and firewall softwares. Anti-spam software scan email before they reach the computer system and automatically gets rid of known spam. Most internet service providers, ISPs, offer this service, sometimes for a monthly fee. Many free email services also offer anti-spam services. Antivirus software can help protect the computer system from computer viruses. It can also help remove known viruses from an infected computer system. A personal firewall is a software package that will assist the user to regulate data that is received and sent from the system. Many internet service providers make available security software for their customers free of cost. It is recommended to update the antivirus program and personal firewall regularly. In new computer, viruses are frequently observed. Several software packages will permit to check for viruses and take updates automatically at scheduled time period. Original spam programs and various threats will be seen at many time intervals and there is no safety package which is completely safe. Several spammers are by means of complicated programs which discover and take benefit of unprotected computers that has been left turned on and linked to the internet. The turning of computer will disconnect it from the internet subsequently, averting damaging programs from attaching to and inflowing in the system. It is wise to keep a watch on the updates regularly to the web browser. The corporations that develop web browsers are constantly modernizing for methods to make their software harmless in way to defend their customers. As authenticated email address is very prone to get spam, 
then unauthenticated. Therefore, it is suggested to erase the email previous to opening. If nevertheless, the user is getting emails from a genuine organization that he or she has recorded the user's email address with and no longer wish to receive emails from them. The user may use their unsubscribe service rather than deleting the messages. One of the important points to be noted that the showing pane is a window that permits to see the matters of an email message without opening it should be disabled. The undetectable programming code which the spammers frequently apply can be triggered by the preview pane. Maximum of email programs offer the choice of turning off the preview pane. Keeping updated and managing the various settings of the control panel of the system is necessary so that the system will not receive spam mails. We'll end this module with summary. Spam is considered to be any unsolicited commercial electronic message. It is often a source of scams, computer viruses and offensive content that takes up valuable time and increases costs for consumers, business and governments. Spam emails are also known as unsolicited commercial email or unsolicited bulk mails, junk mails and irrelevant news group cross posting. Spam mails are successful to get the attention and interest of the users by giving attractive content in the mails. Spam filters consider a long list of criteria while judging the spamminess of an email. Each factor is weighed and added up to determine a spam score, which then determines whether a campaign will pass through the filter or not. There are several ways spammers acquire email addresses. They buy them from someone else, purchase software that harvests email addresses of the internet, hack their way into online providers. Spammers get access to the email addresses when the user registers to any email service, forums or blogs by hacking the information or registering as genuine users. An attacker spoofs the domain names or the email addresses and sends the emails to convince the receiver of the mail that it is from a known sender so that the receiver accepts those mails. This process is known as email spoofing. Several spammers are by means of complicated programs which discover and take benefit of unprotected computers that has been left turned on and linked to the internet.